Hey, I'm Smitty Chad, and today I'm going to be showing you absolutely everything you need to know about stock weapons in Kerbal Space Program. Okay, to start off, we've got a little bit of a uh, gun range going on here, as you can see. Uh, we've got three different sizes of tanks and a whole bunch of these panels, and uh, here we've got a little setup that's going to uh, house our guns, basically, that I'm going to be showing you. We're going to start out with the simplest of the simple. Go down to the Utility tab, right here at the very bottom, and grab you either the Starshot 8 or the Starshot 32. These are the firework cannons that I uh, talk about so much, the firework launchers, and uh, they are the heart of every stock gun. So uh, we're just going to grab the simplest of the simple, the Starshot 8. This only has 8 shots, whereas this one has 32 shots. Right now we're not going to do anything that requires DLC or anything else like that. This is going to be completely pure stock. As long as you're updated to the version of the game that has these in it, you should be able to do this. So just Right click on your little Starshot 8 or Starshot 32, you can do this with either one. And uh, just turn the launch velocity all the way up to 100. It's 50 by default, that's not going to do very much. So turn it all the way up to 100. You can adjust the colors and stuff here, we might get into that a little bit later. Really that's all you need to know, just turn the launch velocity all the way up and make sure that you bind it to a key that you can use to shoot it. So use maybe the custom 1 key, go through to action groups, go to like custom 1. Then left click on it and then you'll get a little pop up here that says launch put that over there there you go now you can launch it with the uh, one key okay we're launched here we got our little firing range and this is ready to go um, straight out of the box literally just a one part gun you can stick this on your tanks your planes or whatever no DLC required no Cal units and uh, it does okay as you can see now you might you might notice that it's going through several panels before it hits things as you can see, it's going to hit that now. It's basically phasing through these before the physics even knows that it happened. And that gets worse as you get faster into the velocities, but it, the bullets also get a lot more powerful the faster that you get. Right now, this is usable and everything, but when you're flying a plane, that is a bit slow for your cannons to be. Um, and it, it can be a bit of an inconvenience. We're already out of shots. Um, but yeah, that can be a bit of an inconvenience, these being very slow. So I usually overclock them to around... 500 we'll get in the overclocking next okay now we're going to get a little bit more advanced with it so we've got this we've got the launch velocity turned all the way up i'm just going to go ahead and pin this because we're going to need this quite a lot during this whole thing you're going to need the uh breaking ground dlc for this and you go to robotics you only have that tab if you have the breaking ground dlc and you get this right here the cal 1000 controller the mighty mighty cal 1000 controller grab you one of those and put it right anywhere doesn't matter you can actually get rid of this after this step I'll show you that as well so right click on it click open editor action groups then left click on your star shot and you'll get a big menu here of all the different things that the Cal 1000 can control so right now we're gonna look for launch velocity so take the launch velocity right click it or left click it rather and put it over here and then click on your little chart here and you'll see these orange dots one orange dot and then like one hollow orange dot grab that hollow one it can be a little bit tricky to nab it but grab it and you'll just see this the top of this curve the green curve there just goes off the charts completely off the charts and if we pull this over here and then look in our menu for this our right click menu for the star shot you'll see the launch velocity is now 500 uh, that is overclocked so you can go crazy with this you can actually make Orion drives uh, basically pulse uh, drives out of this where you can like get a ton of velocity by just shooting the cannon so um, so we're just going to keep it at that nothing else changes really and then we're just going to go into here and uh, I'm going to show you how to adjust the trails so you can make these trails anything you want to this is the what this what the uh, burst what the explosion at the end looks like and this is going to be what the trail looks like so uh, I usually like to turn off the trails completely though I'll just maybe just make them like barely visible uh, black is going to be completely like turning them off more or less and then you're just going to see a bullet flying through there and an explosion so I kind of like that because that's more so like looks like a bullet um, but I've used the trails quite a lot kind of like a tracer um, so yeah that's basically all you need to do you can actually <laughs> look at this you can actually get rid of the cal controller now I'm just going to pin that menu there and you can see I removed the cal controller the velocity is still there so you can get rid of that it's still one part uh, it just uses that cal controller to give it a little bit of help and uh, you'll see we might have a little bit of trouble with the uh, over penetration with this 
but generally this is going to be more powerful. Okay, we're back at our little firing range, and now we're going to try out the overclocked version. And yeah, it shoots right through everything. We might get it to land something, but yeah, we're going to move it back a little bit. Oh no, we're out of bullets. What did we ever do? So when you're testing and you run out of the bullets, or for that matter, if you're doing like a dogfight or something, it's not ex extremely realistic for your gun to only have 8 bullets or 32 bullets or something like that. So uh, there is a workaround. This is fully stock. Um, <laughs> you just press Alt F12 and bring up the humble cheat menu. <laughs> and uh, in the humble cheat menu here, you can turn on infinite propellant. This is the same one that if you're wanting to like cheat into orbit or something like that, you can just turn on infinite propellant and have a engine with no fuel, just do whatever you want it to do. Uh, it actually unlocks completely unlimited fireworks. Yay! So yeah, I'll just show you this on a plane to prove that it does indeed work. Uh, I'll show you some clips of something very similar working while those explosions are rudely interrupting me in the background. But yeah, this is a similar setup to what I used on the uh, Messerschmitt ME 262 uh, uh, thing. I forgot the exact name of the one with the giant cannon, but uh, very similar to what I used on on that. Uh, and I had similar issues with it uh, with it not going all the way through. So how can we get more hits in and ensure that this destroys whatever we're shooting at? All right, first off, we're just going to get rid of the star shot eight completely. This is not going to help us any. Uh, runs out of ammo way too quick. We're going to get the star shot 32, and we're going to grab the cal controller again. Now we're going to get two cal controllers this time and we're going to put them on opposite sides so we remember which one's which. We don't want them to be symmetrical so they won't be controlled the exact same at the exact same time. We want these to be completely separate entities. So we go here to the editor again open editor action groups and of course to our star shot. Now we're going to do the launch velocity just the same and I think I'll do 300 something like that. Always right click on your star shot and open up the menu and you'll be able to see what your launch velocity is. Go like 300 ish. You really don't have to overclock these a bunch unless you're like trying for some kind of godly super gun but then you're going to over penetrate everything it seems like. So maybe maybe 300 will be just fine somewhere around 300. There we go. So just 300 launch velocity. You really want to crank it a bit down for this because of a uh, because of the recoil that we're about to experience. So you can close that Cal 1000 and uh, you can leave that up if you want to, but I'm just going to get rid of it. And we go over to this Cal 1000 and now we're going to do something quite a bit different. Open up editor, go to action groups, same as before, click on your star shot and then go to launch. Not launch velocity, launch. And then once you're in launch, go to this little thing, click on it, and you'll notice this isn't a graph. We can't pull anything around on here. This is like a point plot, basically. And uh, on this line, we can plot points, and each of those points will be a firing of the star shot. This allows us to make basically make a burst group for our little gun. So <laughs> we're just going to go in here, and I think I'll add 32. They'll completely mag dump this. Um, and you can adjust the burst length, by the way, on this. So I'm going to make it two seconds. Uh, these are going to be seconds. Um, so it's default five. I'm just going to make it two seconds long and then try to fill this up with 32 points. Okay, that looks absolutely horrible and I'm sure anyone watching could probably do a way better job at that than me and actually fill the graph up. But you can spend a lot more time and get this graph like very evenly filled up with all of these little diamond points here. And uh, that will give you a full burst all the way through the play cycle which will be do 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 and it'll just stop. So mine will stop there and you'll have to remember that it needs like a cooldown time. Uh, the A10, I didn't really know about the length adjustment, so the A10 actually shoots for like a second, uh, all of its rounds for like a second, and then has like a four second cooldown because I didn't know about this. So this is very helpful turning the length down, um, and it's it's a lot more health, helpful if you actually fill the graph up. That means that the second you're done firing, you know that it's ready to fire again. So how we're going to get this to fire the way that we want it to, so we've got a burst now. We can close the cal out, close this, go back to the build section, and then we can right click on the cal controller and go loop mode to none restart. So it will not loop, it will just play the cycle out and then go back to the beginning. Play the cycle out and go to back to the beginning. So uh, that's going to be very, very helpful because now we're going to take the cal controller and we're going to set it up to our one key. So we're not taking our one key or whatever key you choose to use for firing. One just seems to be the 
easiest to press for me. Maybe 2-2. Two, two. Um, instead of going to the star shot, it's going to go to this cal controller. And the cal controller is going to tell the star shot how many times it needs to shoot. So we're going to go here and uh, play sequence. So just play sequence. So every time it restarts, it'll just play the sequence over again. So this should work if I have remembered everything correctly. And this is the basic idea behind the uh, A-10 cannon in my A-10 video, except we have a lot more of these uh, firework cannons duplicated for extra ammo and for extra shots on the target. This is going to be about 900, 1000 RPM, something like that, rounds per minute. So uh, we're just going to launch this and give it a go. Okay, we're going to try this out. And this will mag dump the entire... Uh, every single round in this immediately so you're gonna almost like really have to use uh the uh infinite ammo cheat that i was showing you um you're, you're gonna have to pretty much use that if you want to use this for any length of time so now we're gonna fire this at our little test target and hopefully this should not over penetrate there we go <laughs> so you can see it went through these because these are thinner and then hit the tanks so uh, that, that tends to be what it does uh, with these. This is going to be a lot of lag and a lot of noise whenever that goes off down there. You can turn off your uh, explosions. I prefer to have them something like a ring or just have like the explosion particles like mostly invisible. Um, it, it helps with the lag and it helps with uh, kind of being annoying. This will kill your sound though. When you fire a gun like this, it will kill all the in-game sound for just a little bit and it'll come back. So, uh, so yeah, there we go. Uh, it's not going to hit anything else, I don't think. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just going to turn myself down and let you just hear how uh, how cool this thing sounds. So if you've seen my ME262 versus the PE8 video, you probably are wondering how I did that whole uh, turret thing. And it's it's really pretty, pretty simple. We're going to start out with any of the cockpits. You can use literally any one of them here. Uh, right now, I'm just going to use what I used in the video, which is inline cockpit. We're going to put that there for later. And we're going to get a point to mount this on the back of an Archangel because apparently I just use them for absolutely everything. So get you some kind of mountain point there and then... I'm just going to clip that down a little bit, like that, and uh, then we're going to go to the robotics. You're going to need breaking ground once again for this, and get these big beefy hinges. So put one of those, and then rotate one in that axis. So you're going to have one this way, one that way. Additionally, you could add, if you're doing like a full like 360 degree turret, you could add a servo down here at the very base of this one, till you could rotate the whole assembly, because this is only going to have 180 degree range like that in whatever direction you're pointing it. Great for like a tail gun or something. Right now we're just going to mount this back of Archangel with absolutely no logic behind it whatsoever. It's just going to be a test aircraft that we could fly around and I can show you how these work. So. You got your two hinges. I recommend putting them down like this, like at a little bit of a, uh, keep it up at a little bit of a little angle there, because this hinge is going to sag down a little bit. Um, additionally, you could take a cal unit like this, put it there, do the whole little overclocking thing, but with the hinges torque limit, and that would that would greatly improve the hinges strength, and you wouldn't have so much sagging with this. So. What you want to do, you want to take this hinge, this is going to be our up and down. So you want to put this to the translate up and down. Um, so axis groups, translate up and down, U and D. And then you're going to put target angle. And I like to turn the sensitivity up to like 33%. It's really depending on however you feel about this. Just experiment around with different sensitivities. This one's going to control our left and right. So we're going to go to L and R, translate left and right. And we're going to go target angle and turn that up to 33%. So now these should control left and right, up and down. But there is one more thing that we're gonna do. So these don't return to their original position. So like, imagine you're using like a Elevons, Elerons, any kind of uh, control surfaces, and they return to their original position every single time. Well, you can do something similar to that by taking a free key, uh, any of the custom keys here, a free one, and then just take and go reset build angle on both of these hinges and put them both to a single key. Now whenever we press that, 
it'll neatly come back to in line exactly where it's supposed to be. So this is really ugly. Um, it's a lot better if it's like clipped into an aircraft and you're pressing re uh, reset to build angle every single time you switch away from it. That's the way I did the PE-8. So every time that you switch back, uh, you wouldn't see this jutting out of the aircraft and looking weird. And it would just look really neat and nice. So uh, we're going to take and get a star shot here. And then we're just going to use this count and we're going to go action groups. Same thing as before, overclock this a tiny bit. I'm not really going to overclock this much because it's just going to like really do a lot of recoil to this whole assembly. And uh, you've got a bunch of robotic joints, so it's going to provide a lot of recoil. But it does have the it does have the added benefit where these are on robotic joints and everything. And it jumps around a lot when you shoot. It does have the added benefit of giving you a nice feeling of recoil whenever you're firing this in first person. So that's pretty neat. Um, so now we're just going to overclock this maybe 200, 300. Don't need to go crazy with it. So uh, you can clip this in a little bit. You can uh, leave it sticking out. Just to show you how it works and everything, I'm gonna leave it sticking all the way out. But you can literally just take, you could just take this now, this whole uh, kitten caboodle, and uh, take it and like clip it down at the aircraft all the way if you wanted to. Just uh, boop, and just leave that sticking out and this will work just the same and look a lot nicer. So uh, we're just gonna leave this out for right now. And uh, you might want some kind of aiming point because this is going to be controlled uh, in first person. So you might want some kind of aiming point. For me, I like to use a uh, communitron, and uh, you'll have to literally, uh, you'll have to literally take and like sight this in to how uh, to wherever you want. So basically, like take this out, see where the bullets are landing in a certain distance, and then go back in and adjust it up or down depending on that. And then you can use these other antennas, these communitrons, the uh, 16S. The 16 and the 16S, you can use the 16S's for a completely different purpose as being your fake guns. So, pretty neat. <laughs> I use those for fake guns on pretty much everything. They look like little uh, 50 calibers or something. Uh, pretty neat. Oh, I also forgot to mention, you might want to add a lock key. It's not necessarily 100% needed, but uh, if you're flying around at any significant speed, this thing's going to start flopping around and you're probably going to want it. Okay, we're going to go to crew, make sure we have a crew on here, and we do not. Uh, I have killed all of my crew, go figure. Okay, I accidentally launched this with the KSR flag, so ignore that completely, but here's our little gun turret. We can press Alt-C to get that little see-through thing, and uh, look at our little dude sitting in there, and he is ready to go. And we can also move this around now by using our translate keys. Normally the translate keys are I, J, K, L, and then H and N are your up and down ones, or not up and downs, uh, forward and back ones. So up and down is going to be I and K, left to right is going to be J and L. I have them bound to my uh, arrow keys, which normally move the camera, but uh, I've got these to the arrow keys because it just seems more intuitive to me. And then right control and right shift are my... Uh, forward and back keys, which we're not going to be using the forward and back. This is just going to be up, down, left, and right. So here's how, what it looks like when it's moving. As you can see, uh, you can turn this up a little bit and uh, get a little bit more sensitivity out of this, but right now works pretty darn good. And while we're moving it, we can see him sitting inside there. Pretty goofy. Normally, Burger Kerman is my tail gunner, but uh, Burger Kerman was not available today. So uh, we got some random dude in there. In fact, let's find him. You can go down to your Kerbal Portraits down here and find the dude. And go EV... Oh, wait. Not go EVA. No, 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 no. We'll get back in there, man. Can't believe I said that. Uh, no. You do not go EVA. He cannot escape. He is your tail gunner forever now. Go to view. Internal view. And not to that one, though. Where is he at? There we go. Internal view. And now you'll be in a first-person view. Pretty neat. And I can tell you right now that that is not going to be our point of aim. That we need to move that a little bit down, I think. Uh, little little tip there. Uh, you might want to turn down your you might want to turn down your reaction wheels because you can see when I move the plane. Our turret's moving a little bit because the reaction wheels are on. Uh, quick fix, if you accidentally left them on like I did, you can go in here and just turn reaction wheels to stability assist mode, SAS only, and uh, there we go. Okay, now that we're in the air, I can kind of show you what this is about and uh, how to use this. So we're going to press C to go back to our little cockpit view there, and we're going to be inside of Burger's little turret. <laughs> well, this is Burger. I forgot. May Burger rest in peace. I think he's dead. Um, so <laughs> anyway, now you'll see the uh, EVA can be a little bit, can be a little bit wonky, 
uh, the outside's moving independently of the uh, inside. We can shoot this thing, so... I uh, didn't overclock these enough to give us the nice cool uh, recoil effect, but uh, this is a, just a pretty basic turn. So if you got something sneaking up behind you, boom, 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 boom. Or in this case, in front of us, because we didn't turn the turret around because of the giant tail fin. But uh, yeah, works really well. Uh, you're going to have run into a lot of issues with the uh, with the uh, firework shots going through the target. But otherwise, this works just like a gun. You have to aim ahead of your target a little bit, yada yada. Um, and it's got accuracy issues. These are going to fire in a little bit of a different spot every single time. Um, but yeah, these are very, very fun, these little turns. Then whenever we're done, we can just press the six key and then boom, it'll snap back into place. I'll show you all of this from an outside perspective. So we can move this left, right, up and down, left and right and up and down at the same time. We can just move this thing anywhere where we want it to, even through the fuselage. And then let's get it in some kind of really awkward position. Then we can just press our key to reset it. And then automatically it'll go back to wherever we had it whenever we built the ship. And you can see uh, it's almost dead straight on because of that little angle that we gave this because these hinges sag a little bit. So yeah, this works uh, really well as a turret. You can put this on the back of uh, your plane or something like that. You can put this on a tank. You can put this on a plane. You can put this pretty much anywhere and have yourself a nice stock turret. But some of you may be asking, but Smoony, what about other weapons? There's missiles, rockets, bombs, all these other things that you've used in your videos, and I am going to show you exactly how to make those too. Those are actually more simple than anything we've done so far. So all of them is going to start with a small probe core. I mean, you can make these things huge if you wanted to, but uh, realistically to fit these on a plane, you're going to start with a pro small probe core. We're going to make a missile at first because it's the most, probably the most basic thing, and uh, now you're going to need some inline reaction wheels. These are going to be almost essential to get some really good locks onto your target. And you're also going to want to get a battery, uh, some kind of small battery. You can get one of these or you can get one of these. Uh, this doesn't need to last very long, so it doesn't need any way of producing its own power. And you're definitely going to want a fly-by-wire avionics hub because this is going to allow you to do the lock on target function because this doesn't actually have that functionality none of the smaller probe cords do you can either turn that on in your difficulty menu and have uh, all SAS modes on all uh, probe cores or you can use the fly by wire avionics hub, hub which will give you it um, I actually like this one quite a lot because it's got something that looks kind of like an infrared like tracker or something on it so it looks kind of cool for a missile so next up you're going to want to get to uh, figuring out what you're going to use as your propellant so in this case I'm just going to make the ones that you've seen a lot in my videos probably and that would be a uh, what I can like to call a chase missile a missile that just flies forever and chases the uh, target around over and over again and gives it no no relief so <laughs> we're gonna make one of those so you just want a Juno engine and in this case we need a uh, intake now that we added an engine so you can add one of these small intakes that's really all you need and uh, there you go uh, you can mount this on top you can clip this in I'm just gonna clip this in for uh, for aesthetics sake and uh, next up after that, you're going to want quite a bit of lift. You're going to need quite a bit of lift for this. Uh, you're going to want to use several uh, wings if you can. These basic fins are very useful for this, uh, though you might need to use some uh, control surfaces too to get maximum uh, controllability out of this. So I'm just going to use two of these, and then I'm going to take these fins here, these basic fins. This is a setup I like to use a lot, and do four of those, and you clip those in a little bit. So those are going to control our uh, our pitch, y'all, uh, everything, and uh, along with the uh, reaction wheels. And then these are just going to give us extra lift because, believe it or not, the basic fins here actually give you real lift, not the uh, yellow uh, non-lift control area like lines things. <laughs> this gives you blue good lift lines and lots of them for their size. So there we go. That is the basic rocket. We might want to clip these down here a little bit just to give our a uh, little missile something to uh, sit on and then we're just gonna turn it up like this you can mount this on a plane you can do whatever you want to with it uh, if you're mounting it on a plane I would suggest you put something like this on there so you can mount it to a uh, hard point basically or something else that has a thing 
uh, lock that on it. Uh, or you can just reroute to the tank because that's the biggest area, and then that should al that should allow you to uh, to stick this onto a planes like a decoupler or something like that and fire this off. So now I'm going to show you exactly how these work. Okay, we've got a PEA in the air uh, flying around. This is a pretty slow moving, huge target. I uh, figured it'd probably be the easiest. And now we've got our little missile that we just built. And this should have, yeah, it should have a one thrust to weight ratio unless you really, really overdo it. And uh, we're going to turn on SAS. And right now I'm having a bit of an issue uh, targeting things. Usually you get these little boxes around stuff. And for some reason, Right now, my uh, target box things are not showing up for me. So we might actually just fly this around until I can get a lock on the, our target, which is the PE-8 that's flying around somewhere here. Um, I'm just going to click around and see if I can get this to pop up. So basically, we're looking for this down here to pop up um, once we've locked onto the target. And then we're just going to press hold target. And that'll automatically track the target for us like it's a mod. But this is completely this is as stock as it comes, all of this stuff is. Ah, there it is. It's a much lower than us. So now our target is a PE-8. Just double click on the plane. If your boxes aren't showing up, you can still do that. Then click target. Now this will lock your target. You don't have to touch it. You can manually pilot it. I've done that a few times. I did that in my ATN video and stuff. Uh, but this will just basically just chase the target until it gets a hit. And it, it, it will chase it for a very long time. Right now we have a ton of fuel. Uh, actually, I accidentally have uh, unlimited fuel on. Let me turn that off. Okay, now we have like minutes and minutes and minutes of fuel. Probably like an hour of fuel. Um, those are very efficient engines. And this thing's going to chase the PE-8 until it gets a hit in, which... Oh, it did that time! Uh, we blew a couple of fins off, but I don't think it did much damage to PE-8. This will just continually chase it forever and ever. Okay, it's coming in here. It will home to the center of mass, I'm pretty sure. So there we go. It hit it, but it didn't really do that much damage. Um, that can be a bit of an issue. Luckily, there are ways to make these have a little bit more oomph. They actually do a lot better against ground targets than they do pretty much anything else. Um, because there isn't that much of a velocity difference going on between these two. Um, so you're not going to get much damage. And plus... They're not using that heavy of parts. And right, those are the basics on how to make a missile. I won't go too much more into it because uh, uh, this could take a bit of time to get this completely right and actually get it completely working. And we're going to move on to bombs. Bombs are probably the simplest of the simple. This is all a bomb really is. I would say take a tank, some nose cones, and uh, yeah, you've got you've got yourself a bomb there. This is the same exact design I used in KSP2, believe it or not. But, uh, yeah, if you want this to fly a little bit more straight, uh, you can put some fins on this. Boom. Um, you can clip those in, make them look a little bit better. Uh, you can also make this a little bit of like a JDAM or something by taking this one off and putting one of these. Um, you only really need one reaction wheel because this is going to be like exact. And then you can put in a, uh, put on this and then put in a little battery. All right, actually, you would want to put the, remember to use this, the fly-by-wire, or turn on uh, all SES modes on all probes. Um, now you're going to put on some batteries. Really only need one battery. And yeah, now that should uh, that should be able to, as long as you're able to click on your target. Uh, press hold target, the target hold button, and then this should home right into uh, your target and land near, pretty near them or right on them. You can kind of guide it yourself too. Something else you could do with a similar design is take right here, go use one of these pocket beams and then put that there and then go get yourself some of these decouplers and put you like eight decouplers on there and turn their force percentage down to like 20 or so and then uh, clip these up here and then we're gonna clip this whole thing down into here and then uh, go with a similar wing design uh, that we had for our other uh, guided stuff and then we're gonna put some of these dudes and then we're going to add in some little rocket boosters just so I can show you what this how this works and uh, basically this is going to be a uh, 
It's going to be a uh, cruise missile. No, not a cruise missile. A cluster missile. This is going to be a cluster missile with these on, but it's going to be cluster bomb without them on. So you could just attach this to the bottom of a plane, and the second that you press, uh, make sure to check your staging. The second that you press uh, decouple, these will all fly out and uh, be little bomblets. Okay, we're going to quickly fire our little kick stage here, and we're going to point toward the uh, toward the VAB and all of that. I should have given these more uh, burn time, but there we go. We got a fair bit of velocity, um, and now we're just going to aim down and uh, rain terror on the uh, research and development center. So now when we press space, all those will fly out. At least they should. They're not doing that. Uh, you can up the force percentage a little bit to get them to work a bit better, but you can see we got little chunks landing pretty much everywhere. Okay, we're going to try that whole thing again, uh, this time with hopefully a lot more velocity. Now I should be able to aim down once again, and maybe we'll spin this time. Boom. Okay, yeah, now we've dropped all of our little bomblets, I say in quotation marks. Those are going to fall behind us, and uh, then you can have uh, your main one still be guided, actually. So you can have, have kind of like a combo uh, munition there, and have like a whole bunch of those little uh, sub-munitions come out, and then have a... Uh, main payload uh, so this can be helpful for missiles or uh, or for bombs you can see all those little bits it won't even hit the research and development center somehow so yeah it, you can hit a pretty wide area you can add a lot of those you can time it till it's later uh, that can be very helpful for when you just can't hit a target okay now i'm gonna show you how to build some simple rockets these won't be nearly as pure stock as the uh as the other things i was showing you like the missiles but uh basically all you'll need is not that nose cone but go to mass, sort by mass, and then go up here to the very, very tiny one. The one that it says Jeb uses as a hat. You can barely see it. Barely, barely see this little dude. But this is uh, one of the smallest parts in the entire game. So now we're going to get some Sepatrons. And then we're going to put two of those. It is crucial that you put two of them opposite each other. Because the Sepatrons, actually, their thrust comes out exactly where it shows that their thrust comes out. So, uh... They're not very even. Um, it's very hard to get the Sepatrons to give you even thrust. So, uh, and also, two is going to just give you generally just more oomph anyway. So, now you're going to go back here. Take and clip those into each other. And you're going to have these ugly sticks sticking out, but uh, that is the only way to do it, really. <laughs> now you can go into here and get these, the ducted fan blades. And this is at least what I like to do with this. Um, and you can get like four of those and then take them like this. And then like this. Boom. And then you can uh, press them into the rocket a little bit. Clip them in there. Now, uh... These are not at any sort of angle right now, but you can actually you can actually adjust the angle. And uh, there we go. We'll get something like that going. And uh, yeah, these should spin like crazy now and kind of stabilize themselves. Um, you might want to turn down the actual thrust on these because these are going to have some one of the craziest thrust to mass ratios that you could ever imagine. Like, look at this crap. Um, yeah, 19 thrust to weight. Um, so you might want to go for a longer burn time. It's really depending on what you want with it, but uh, now all you have to do to fire this, these can really be stacked a lot. All you have to do to fire this is like get like a decoupler, like that, and the decoupler should go to the back of this node right here on the back of the rocket. So the rocket's going to have this little node behind the uh, nose cone, and now you can press this back, and then whenever you fire this, make sure you, that you have both of these together and it'll fire and uh, release the rocket. We're gonna stick a quick probe core on the back of this just for testing's sake. And uh, I'm gonna show you how it works. Okay, now we're gonna try out this little thing and uh, I've actually made uh, quite a few uh, like uh, clusters of these and the such like until you can like put all of them in like a little launcher. I put these on that one plane from KSP2. That was one of my first videos. Uh, yeah, these things are pretty cool. So there you go. Uh, we didn't have that at high enough of an angle, but you can see they fly extremely straight. I use these on my uh, on my A10 and stuff like that. Um, 
you know, these are these are just neat little rockets. They don't really do much damage, though. Fair warning. I've only had them destroy parts a handful of times, but they're very fun nonetheless. Um, and when you have them in a lot of like big clusters, they can be pretty fun. Um, but anyway, uh, that's about it. I think that's about all. All of the stock weapons that I've made so far, there's a million different options. You can combine all the techniques here and make some kind of Burt Cannon Galway missile thing. Uh, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff. I've actually been kind of secretly working on a, uh, a cannon that uses the fireworks cannons in reverse to fire itself. Kind of like an Orion Drive like bullet top thing. Um, so you have like a missile, basically a guided missile dr driven only by the uh, fireworks cannons. Been working on some stuff like that and a bunch of other stock weapons. These can actually still be useful in a lot of BDA circumstances, I think, like uh, with, with mods and everything. Because uh, some of these uh, are completely ignored by the BDA uh, and uh, stuff like that. And I'm pretty sure those firework cannons ignore armor and anything else that you might have. So yeah, that's about that's about it for uh, the stock weapons. I think you can take the tools that I've given you here and build all kinds of crazy stuff. Let me know what you're going to build with it. Let me know if I left anything out. And let me know what you'd like me to give a guide on next in the comments. I'll put a link to a playlist here of some uh, recreations so you can see some of this stuff in action in my older videos. But that's it for me. Bye.